of a sudden the person sometimes is surprised um, that I would care about something physiological in the middle of whatever we're talking about. Um, Because sometimes it's a big, it's a leap from the depth of the content. Do you know what I mean? We may be talking about something very heavy, Mm -hmm. but I watch that they've stopped breathing and they're just and not moving. Um, Mm -hmm. Or if they are moving and talking, I haven't seen their chest rise or fall once. You know, so Mm -hmm. that means if they're getting air and they're not getting much, and I don't know how much it's not moving their chest. You know, Um, I mean, in yoga they have three part yogic breath, and if you're really following the breath, the breath goes all the way from the the stomach area up through the middle chest up to the upper chest. I mean, it's huge. It's a huge amount of breath that we can hold in our bodies. So, I mean, I can tell as I'm talking to you, I'm not breathing as well. So I've got to <laughs> slow down and do that, too. <laughs> I've noticed when I speak. Oh, oh, Dr. Krim, I'm breathing deeply. I'm just doing that deep three-part breathing as you talk okay, about you it. Okay, you go ahead and you. do that. I'll try to catch up. <laughs> you don't get um, to do that. You're I, I've noticed when I speak that I don't breathe because I'm running at a higher level. And, um, and sometimes, sure. I'll do it even right now. I just need to take a deep breath. Sometimes just doing one of those breaths, I don't know if you can tell, but I felt like my pace slowed. I mm-hmm. I, I noticed that my energy, my talking pace will change. I settle more into my body if I take another breath. I mean, this is what I will do with my client. Let's, let's just take one more breath right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I'm good with that. Yeah, and if you just... I feel myself. See, this is the other thing I notice with my clients is that as a, and this also addresses where we, Moonstone Center's other part is working with the professionals, um, mm-hmm. and attending to our own countertransference, and that's a big term in our field. I mean, if, if therapists are listening, they know what it means. But those who aren't therapists, um, it's kind of about what our process is, what our emotional, mental, relational processes during the sessions. And and what I've started talking about is the somatic transference, that we have a physiological process that's going on while we're treating our patients as well. Yeah. If you've listened mm-hmm. to someone's trauma stories, if you really pay attention to your own body, you're, you're getting, your stomach may be tightening. You may have mm-hmm. emotion that you're not sure you should express or not. Um, you know, you're having your own response, um, they talk about it as vicarious trauma or secondary trauma, that we mm-hmm. often as provi- mental health professionals and healthcare professionals are also traumatized just by engaging with and attaching very intimately with our clients who've been through these things. So so one of the mm-hmm. events that we do is called Restoring the Healer. Moonstone puts that on and I lead mm-hmm. that with Simone Marquet where we use the restorative yoga and teach all those processes so that we are teaching the professionals to take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about how much we take in sitting across from our clients, and we want to be there with our clients, if you think about the level of pain and emotion that we sit with and hold mm-hmm. um, and often don't let go of if we're not conscious about it, um, mm-hmm. we're, we're kind of in need of that as well. So mm-hmm. not kind of, we are. We are in need of attending mm-hmm. to that as well. So... Um, I was going off on this about the breathing. You were asking about the breathing. Um, well, you I know, you're ask, talking. You're, <laughs> go ahead. Go, go ahead. What, what? I mean, you're 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 just you know you we we moved you into breathing and moved me into breathing already prior to that, and you're mm-hmm. you're saying that the awareness of the therapist is absolutely essential in terms of being able to to have more room to take the client in, and at the same time, not take the client in on a level that's going to bruise. The therapist to be farther. Mm-hmm. Well, and knowing that sometimes we are bruised. I mean, it's kind of like we're going into some some deep places, and so we need our own um, recovery. We need our own yeah. restoration. I mean, that's why we call it restoring the healer. It's you know, mm-hmm. some people talk about it as healing the healer, and I think that's an apt term as well or apt phrase. But I, mm-hmm. the reason I specifically talk about restoring the healer is because it's saying we want to. You've been through something. We need to restore you. So that you can go back in again, so that you can be there again, you can be there fully. I mean, we hear about compassion fatigue and mm-hmm. the burnout that therapists are experiencing, and it is very real. I mean, I, I think mm-hmm. some of my own chronic fatigue process is from years of doing deep attachment trauma work. I mean, you know, my first years as a therapist, I was on a, a grant for the lo- for that county that I was working in had a child sexual abuse grant, and I saw a lot of children who had been sexually abused. Mm-hmm. And 
people would often say to me, how do you handle it so well? You never seem thrown. And I was like, I think it just must be a gift because I'm not affected. I just, you know, do the treatment, walk out the door, and I'm there. I'm fully present when I'm there, but I'm not feeling it. And then, you know, years later I start crashing. And um, Mm -hmm. my body, I think, was handling quite a bit, you know, without Mm -hmm. me paying attention. And uh, and I think that's why the yoga, to me, is so powerful because Mm -hmm. it's slower the full body, it's mind, body, spirit, it's incorporated. You can attend to all of those in yoga if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, there's room for it. So that, that's part of why I like the yoga so much. But some people may want other routes as well. I mean, not, not everybody's into yoga. Um, but You know, we, we have a, a caller. Would you be interested in taking sure. a caller? Sure. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's find out. Hello, hello, caller. This is Dr. Carol Francis. I'm with Dr. Elizabeth Krim. What's your first name? Uh, hello, this is Pete. Hi, Pete. Um, and do you have a do you have a question for Doctor Doctor Kern? Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the the yoga part. Um, I, I'm kind of struggling with that, and I'm, I'm hoping you can help me understand. I, I have just the, the tiniest um, uh, experience with yoga. You know, my wife and I went to one class. That's all my experience. But you know, I went to the class, and I was expecting lots of things, and when I left, I felt like, well, I've really stretched my body out well, but that's it. So I, I, I'm kind of at a loss of, does, does, does that mean I would be someone, if I came into your office, you would say, oh, probably not a good candidate for yoga, or is there something going on there that I'm just not understanding? Oh, great question, Pete. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Krim, what's your response yeah. to that? Um, well, Pete, thank you for calling in. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually struck by how common uh, that question or that comment or that that response to when I introduce yoga comes into my office. Um, I'm not wanting to be uh, gender biased or sexist or anything, but a lot more men <laughs> question the purpose of yoga or they say they've had an experience with it and they're like, well, it didn't do much for me. Um, um, so that that is not in common. I also find a lot of people who are runners don't um, aren't as open or, you know, say, well, I run. That's how I tend to my body. Um, and I was a runner, and I miss it. I, I really am not um, running anymore because sometimes it sets my fatigue off, and at this point my knees aren't so great. <laughs> you know, There's a lot of those pieces in it. But um, So I get, I know what running can do, and I know what a good strong workout can do and doing the weights. I used to do all those things. Um, for me, I'm not doing them now in part because of um, because of my own body's process, you know, my own health. But what I discovered with the yoga is it's not, I'm not recommending the yoga as a workout or as a place to replace that. Um, if you want to be a runner, I say still keep running. Um, but the yoga is there, and especially when I make a referral to yoga, I'm usually making a referral not just to go take a class. I'm making a referral to a yoga therapist, which would be an individual assessment with someone who's going to pay attention to how you are in your body and looking at how your mind thinking stuff, you know, all that emotional heady stuff is disconnected or how integrated it is with your awareness with your body and what you're doing with your body Um, and, and how flexible you are in certain areas or how able to move in and out of poses you are. How is your breath? All these pieces that really aren't about workout or stretching or just a purely physiological experience. Um, the yoga therapist I, wor- I refer to in yoga therapy in general can include what they call as asanas, which are the postures and the movement, um, uh, pranayama, which is the breath and the different types of breathing. There's also um, chanting and mudras and um, meditation, and, and there's all these different things that can be taught. And if you integrate meditation and mindfulness while you're in your body, you would be amazed at what you can get in tune with that your body is doing and what emotions you become aware of or uh, thought processes that you 